Okay, so today's RetroBat setup guide is going to be emulating Nintendo Switch through RetroBat front ends from Windows. So I covered this on a different setup guide, which was using a Yuzu emulator, and you can check that one out in my RetroBat playlist. But for this setup guide today, we're focusing on the other emulator, which we can download to RetroBat, which is Ryujinx. So we're going to be looking at different file extensions you need, enhancing how your games present themselves through visual settings, and other bits and pieces. So this one's a must if you want to emulate your Nintendo Switch collection. Check this one out. <laughs> Okay then, so first things first, before I start today's setup guide, just make sure to hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content such as RetroBat like I'm doing today. So what we're looking at today then is Ryujinx through RetroBat. So like I said at the start of the video, I've actually covered this with Yuzu in the past and uh, some people debated whether or not it should be a part of RetroBat but it is a part of RetroBat and yes it's not retro but it is included in RetroBat and my aim is to cover every system in RetroBat so of course Ryujinx is a part of RetroBat so what we're going to do then first is open up RetroBat itself Okay, so once we're inside of RetroBat, we're going to go to the RetroBat logo on the wheel just there. And we're going to straw to find Ryujinx. And here it is. So if we go to install this, it's going to say emulator is missing. And that's fine. So what we're going to do is just back out of RetroBat. And so we need to download Ryujinx manually. So what we're going to do is just use our favorite web browser. And the link is going to be in my description so you can download this yourself. And what we're going to do is just download the Windows version. Uh, just remember, RetroBat is a Windows distribution. So let's download Ryujinx, which is the latest 1.1.1052. And here we go. So it's downloaded. Okay, so once we download a Ryujinx, it's going to be in a zipped folder. So what we're going to do is just right click on this and extract it to the desktop. I'm using WinRAR, you might be using WinZip or 7-Zip, but they all work the same, so it's tracked here, and we're going to get a folder come out of this, which is titled Published, as you can see just here. So what we're going to do next is just wait for this to extract, and we can now delete this zipped folder. So what we're going to do with this is open up RetroBat directory, so right-click on your shortcut, open file location, and once we're in file location, we're going to go down to Emulators, and inside of emulators, we're going to find Ryujinx. And here it is. And as you can see, there's nothing here at the moment, just portable. So I'm going to just go to this publish folder and just open this up and highlight all the contents inside of here. Once everything's highlighted, you can press Ctrl and A together or just use a cursor to highlight everything. Right click on it and then just copy everything from that folder. This is then going to go inside your emulator's Ryujinx folder. So just right click and we can then paste. Okie doke, so everything is inside. Now what we're going to do next is actually open up Ryujinx.exe, which is going to open up the emulator. The first thing you're going to see is keys not found. So we're going to OK that. And this is the main user or graphical user interface for Ryujinx, so very similar to Yuzu. And what we need to do now is put our prod.keys file into Ryujinx. And to do this, we're going to go to File, Open Ryujinx folder. And if we go into System, we can then put our prod.keys file inside of here. So I got my prod.keys and I'm going to copy these and just paste it into this system folder and so just to check this is now installed what we're going to do is just close down Ryujinx and we're going to reopen it so RetroBat and open file location let's go back down to the emulators folder and back down to Ryujinx 
And if we open up Rio Jinx this time, our little window saying prods.keys is now gone because that's been installed. Next thing we need to do is add some firmware to Rio Jinx. So you can grab your firmware and what we're going to do with this is go to Rio Jinx again. Let's go to tools at the top, install firmware and I'm going to go to install a firmware from XCI or zip. If I just left click on that, I can then go to desktop and go inside of the folder where my firmware is located. And the most recent firmware for Switch is 16.1.0. And as you can see, I'm using a .zip file of this. And you should then get a little pop-up saying install firmware 16.1.0. And yes, we want to install this. And here we go, that's that done. So that's the emulator configured. Now we're going to start adding some games. So I've got Kirby in a Forgotten Lands to add to this to test today through Rio Jinx. And let me tell you, it's a superb game and it runs really well. So what I'm going to do is first go up to Retro Bat Shortcut, Open File Location and Batch UI. And if we go to System List and drop down System, if you don't have this, check out my comprehensive setup guides for Retro Bat. Um, but anyways, if you hopefully do see this, we're going to scroll down until we reach Switch. And under Switch, we got all the file extensions that it's going to set. So if you've got any other game which ends without one of these, then it's not going to work. So in my case, I'm using a .nsp of my Kirby game, and that's going to work fine. So if we back out of here and back out of back GUI, we're this time going to go to the ROMs folder and just look for Switch. I'm then going to paste my Kirby game inside the ROM Switch folder. And before I go any further, let me just remind you that you're going to need a fairly decent PC to support Switch games. It can be pretty demanding on your processor and uh, GPU. So everything's up and ready now, ready to go. So we're going to go back to RetroBat. And this time we've got Nintendo Switch. Cool. And we've got our game here, and I'm going to just scrape some art for this one. So if I go to main menu by pressing start on my controller, scraper, and scrape now. And scraping has been finished. We're going to go to game settings, update game list, and just press yes. And here we go, excellent stuff. So if we go to view options, advanced system options, emulator, we're then going to select Ryu Jinx. And from Ryu Jinx emulator, we have a selection here of different video settings. So we got driver, and normally Switch games, I believe, run fine through OpenGL and Vulkan. So I'm going to leave this to auto and everything else on default settings for this. And I'm going to open up Kirby in the Forgotten Land.
stop it there for now. And you'll notice there was a lot of staggering, a lot of lagging in that game. And the reason that is, is that Ryujinx emulator, much like RPCS3, PS3, or even Yuzu emulator for Switch, is working on something called shaders and what it's doing is collecting all the different pieces of data the graphics everything you see on screen and it's collecting them so if i boot this back up again you'll notice that the lagging will have stopped so let's boot this up one last time part of the gameplay that lagging was gone but the more i went into the game that lagging started again because it's not yet caught up with those graphics so what we're going to do next is just check some video settings and of course the reason you might want to emulate your switch collection is in our case we've actually got a switch light and so sometimes it's so much better to use this through emulation so we can watch it or play on the full screen rather than being subject to a tiny little light so what we're going to do then is go to advanced system options and internal resolution now technically we can boost these games up to 4k ish so just be aware that if you do got something like four times then you are going to experience a lot of lag and i believe that even the best gaming laptop or best gaming computer in the world it's going to struggle so even if we bump this up to two times it's going to make a massive difference and game aspect ratio i recommend leaving this to auto and if we go down to visual rendering, we can go to shader cache. And like it says, it reduces stuttering by enabling shader cache. So let's just put this one on yes. So texture recompression, we're going to leave this one to auto. Anastrophic filtering, again, it really depends on your hardware specs. If you've got something mid-range, uh, you might be able to pop this up to around four times to eight times. Uh, personally, I would stick with around two times or four times, and that should do us fine. Now, if we go into emulation, we can use undocked mode or docked mode. And just follow what it says. So like it says, it can increase performance on some lower end systems. And if we go down to drivers and go into video, uh, there might be a game, for example, which is known to work on Ryu Jinx, but you find it's not booting at all. So in that case, just go to video and change from OpenGL to Vulkan. 
So that's it for today's Ryu Jinx in Retro Bat setup guide. It's a fairly simple one to do, and without a doubt, it's the best way to play your Switch collection in up to 4K resolution. And it's also great for people who own the Switch games, but are subjected to playing them on something like a Switch Lite, where you've got no TV compatibility with one of those machines. So if you like today's setup guide, hit notifications, subscribe and like. Also check me out on social media. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and TikTok. And I'm just asking for no pressure donations in my channel just to enhance the content which I'm going to be producing next year in 2024. Anyways, until next time, stay retro.